Welcome to my channel, Edible Thoughts Makes. My name is Stephanie, and this channel is where I share with you my works in progress, finished projects, things I'm cooking up, books I'm reading, funny things the kids say. My hope is that as you watch this episode and the previous episodes, that you find some inspiration along the way. So it is the second week of February, and this is episode 16. Today I have a few finished projects to show you. Um, and I have several works in progress to show you. Um, if you have heard of the term cast on itis, um, I have it year round. Um, basically, it means that you are always itching to cast on something new. Um, and for me, it's not necessarily like the latest pattern out always. Um, sometimes it's just that I get inspired or I have just the right color combination or um, it is a chilly 
day. It's about mid-February now, and I think this morning, maybe it was in the teens or 20s um, degrees Fahrenheit. I don't really remember, but it actually didn't feel too bad. But we did get a warning statement um, for a weather um, warning issued for freezing temperatures to come, like to drop all of a sudden in a couple hours um, to be negative like 15 or something degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm not sure if that includes wind chill or not. I'm guessing not, because it also said it's gonna get pretty gusty. And right now, it doesn't look windy at all, um, and this morning when I went out, it didn't feel too bad, um, but there are cold temperatures to come. Um, I wanted to, for sure with you, so this Alejandra shawl that I talked about in episode 12, um, I, wasn't going to fringe because I said I didn't like fringe with winter coats, but then um, a couple weeks ago I decided to fringe it. Um, it keeps the bottom from flipping up as much and it is just kind of a fun extra little pizzazz. It gives a lot of movement to the shell and it's just kind of fun. I had um, plenty of this yarn to use and so um, it kind of worked out perfectly. So I love it. So, um, I recently did a test knit for Vanessa. Um, let me pull this up. She um, goes by designs by Vanessa on Ravelry. And um, it is the Laura Beanie. I knit two of them. It is so squishy and super bulky yarn. And so it's a fast knit. I think it's very beginner friendly. It is knit from the bottom up. And here's the second one I made. Isn't that so fun? You can do two solids. I did a marled gradient and a tweed in this one. And I did a marled gradient and a solid for this one. Super, super fun. She just released this pattern um, this month. Uh, let's see, so it's super bulky. Gauge is 10 stitches um, and 14 rows in four inches of stockinette using US 15 or 10 millimeter needles. Um, it doesn't use up a ton of yarn. Her sizing comes in baby, toddler, child, and adult. And of course, if you want to adjust the height of your hat, just do more repeats of the pattern so you can make it more fitted or more slouchy. I used Lion Brand's Wool Ease Thick and Quick and it worked out really nicely. Um, I initially was making one for me and one for my husband but he claimed both of them and that's okay because I have more color plans for my own. Um, so it does have a bit of stretch to it. So on me it doesn't fit as um, fitted. It has like a little bit of slouch in the back, but my husband has a bigger head than I do, so it fits him very um, snug and fitted. But it is a super comfy hat. Well, I guess if I pull it down more, it's not so slouchy, but then it kind of gets in my glasses. So there, there we go. Very comfortable. Really fun. Lots of different color combinations. Um, if maybe you um, are in school and wanted to do your school colors, that would be really fun. Maybe your school has a fundraiser coming up and they are collecting items for donation for a silent auction or something. I feel like this would be a super fun hat to knit up for that. Um, you can add a pom-pom on top. You can do a yarn pom-pom or a faux fur pom-pom. My husband doesn't do pom-poms, so I'm leaving his pomless. Um, but for my own, we'll see. I might add a pom to it. Um, I also think it'd be fun to make one for um, a beanie, um, I mean, sorry, for a bun. So like I would leave out the top and just like bind off so there's a hole on top. Um, I feel like oftentimes I put my hair up in a bun. So then if I could just put the hat on and then with a hole around the top, then my bun can stay on top. Cause it's kind of hard to wear hats with a bun unless it's like a really slouchy one that my bun can kind of hide in the beanie. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try that. I think I'll make uh, maybe two for myself. I'll make one with a palm and then I'll make one maybe for a bun. So we shall see. Maybe that'll be in the next episode. So yeah, super fun knit. Um, she has the pattern on Ravelry for $3. Um, and she, I really like Vanessa's 
format for her patterns. They're all tri-fold PDFs, so they're easy to fold up and put in a project bag um, and easy to carry around. The It's very organized, so it tells you exactly what you need. Um, she also created a video tutorial for this beanie, so um, you can see how you do the stitch pattern. And then I believe she has it on her website or her blog um, as a free pattern. So if you decide that you don't want it printed out for a PDF, you can still um, access the pattern. Let me just double check so I'm not telling you wrong. Uh, yep, it is on her um, website as a free pattern as well. Um, and I can link to that down below in the description section. Um, and always, as always, my patterns are all up on my Ravelry at Edible Thoughts, no space. Um, so you can check it out there as well. Um, let's see. Next finished object are my Nightwalk socks by Lindsay Fowler at Lost and Fond. These are so much fun. The, the color came out really nicely on here. These, both of these yarns are by Christina at Teal Torch Knits. The sprinkly one is Happy Birthday Lena Boo Boo. And this pinkish purple neon speckle is Dirty Pop. I really enjoyed knitting this. Something I would change is my color work. So the color work actually should have three repeats. I only did one because I tried it on at that point and it was too tight. I just did it um, not loose enough. I would go up a needle size for the color work section and then go back down. So another thing with this pattern, it only came in two sizes, medium and large. So to knit a smaller size, she recommended going down a needle size. So I knit the entire sock in US zeros, which are, I believe, two millimeter um, needles so it took longer because it's on US 0 versus um, US 1 or one and a half or even twos um, but all in all I think I used 300 yards total for this pair of socks and then the heel isn't just like I feel like a typical heel flap gusset it's called eye of partridge there you go really fun I love how the speckles shine through and then in the original pattern, I don't believe there's a contrast toe, but I think a contrast toe is really fun, so I did a contrast toe. I don't think I've really done any contrast heels yet, but I did, actually. I take that back. Um, I have a half-finished project to show you, and that has a contrast heel. So I think... Yeah, I think that's it for my finished projects and we'll just move right into the works in progress. So since I was just talking about socks, let's keep going with socks. So I was very excited to cast on the High Desert socks, also by Lindsay Fowler, after I finished the Nightwalk socks. So the Nightwalk socks, like I said, were on two millimeter needles, and I was just ready to be off of two millimeter needles. The High Desert socks, she's also doing a, uh, knit along right now so the hashtag is high desert socks k a l if you want to follow along with that and join along um i'll show you here so it's fingering weight held double so it's essentially essentially a dk weight um fabric and there is striping and marling and it is really really fun and engaging and works up really fast because it's fingering held double um you can do lots of different combinations and um, use up scraps and your main color won't be as scrappy unless it's like a child size sock um, but once you get into the adult size you would need a full skein of fingering weight or more um, if you're doing an adult large sock so let me show you look at that this knit up in like no time. Okay, I mean I spent a lot of time on it, but not as much time as I did on um, a finer fabric of socks. These are so much fun. Check out that marling up close. Focus. And then my stripey part here. 
I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with a higher contrast initially um, because if you choose a variegated yarn for this marling part, it's going to end up being more subtle, just the nature of it being variegated and then marled. Um, but I kind of like the subtlety of it. I think it's really beautiful. And then there is these pearl channels. There are these pearl channels in there, which hug your feet so nicely. And then look, I said I didn't do a contrast heel yet, but um, here's my first contrast heel. Isn't that fun? And then you keep going down, 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 down. And then there's the contrast toe, also marled. It is an easy to follow pattern. Um, you get the approximate yardage for your main color and your two contrast colors, which is really helpful when you're trying to figure out if you have enough yarn for um, that section. I use a digital scale to help me calculate all of that. So basically what you do is you weigh your yarn and then you look at the yarn label. Hopefully you still have that, but that'll tell you how many yards are in 100 grams. So then you take what you have times um, your yardage divided by 100 grams and that'll give you how much yardage you have for that amount of yarn. Here's the start of my second one. Because for me, I haven't gotten second sock syndrome yet, and I think the biggest thing for me is just casting on that second one as soon as I finish the first one, when I still have the momentum to keep it going. And honestly, like, when I make these socks, I just want to wear them. For me, when I make garments or accessories or anything like that, I make them with the intention of wearing them, not to just store them in my closet or in a dresser or something, or just to look at them. So that's also motivation to get them done in order to wear them. Um, so I'm really excited about these. These will go really well with the negative temperatures that are coming up. Um, so I'm hoping to get that second sock done by the end of the week. Um, I already have ideas for color combinations for more. Um, these are thicker, so I think they go well in boots. They wouldn't go well, I feel like, in like slip-on shoes or tennis shoes even might be questionable depending on how snug your tennis shoes are. But boots, I think these will go really well with. Like this um, is a long enough leg. I feel like that'll go well over leggings or footless tights even. And then boots and a dress or, you know, fleece lined leggings with this on top of it would be really nice. Um, I live in fleece lined leggings in the winter. Um, they're just really comfortable and cozy and go with um, dresses and tunics and stuff like that. So I highly recommend this pattern. Join the along. It's really fun. Um, there's so many color combinations. Check out the hashtag High Desert Socks um, for some color ideas. There's some peachy ones, some orange, rusty, brown, and yellow ones. There was one with like a pop of blue in the striping, and the rest of it I think was more like brown and rusty, and that was so pretty. Um, I'm already thinking that maybe I'll make my husband a pair that has like white and blue and maybe like a pop of yellow in there um, for this striping. I think that could be really pretty. Um, we'll see. Um, if they keep going this quick, I may have several of these done um, maybe in the next month or so. Um, we don't really get a full melt, I feel like, until May. Like last year when we were trying to get our garden ready, the ground in some areas was still frozen in May. So we couldn't really plant until I feel like the second half of May, um, which also means that winter or cold weather accessories and wear, even if they're thick like these, get worn um, for many, many months of the year. And of course, once it gets warm, they'll get put away and then when it gets cold, they'll come out again. But um, what I'm saying is that they get a lot of wear probably like eight or nine months out of the year. So they're definitely worth making for us and um, fun to wear. Oh, let me show you the yarns individually. This is one of my contrast colors. I use these in a past sock as the main color. Here's another one of the colors. And then this one's attached right now, so I'll try not to pull it out. This heathered color. So I have a heathered, a solid, and a variegated. Okay, next I want to show you, we'll keep going with the socks. 
In a previous episode, I had shown these toe-up socks that I was knitting on 9-inch circulars, and I was waiting for one more to get one more um, set of 9-inch circulars to do the second sock. So then I'm kind of doing two socks simultaneously, but on completely separate needles, um, and I'm finding it really fun. What I love about a good basic or vanilla sock pattern is that you don't have to think. You basically just knit stockinette the whole time and the striping is really fun because it's kind of like doing color work for you. Um, this one I think I still have a little bit to go and then I can start my heel. I thought about doing an afterthought heel and just knitting a whole tube and then going back in but I think I'm just gonna stick with the flegal heel which I know is comfortable on me and um, the part I haven't decided for that is if I'm gonna use this contrast color here, this heathered gray or just continue in the striping and not switch yarns there. I'll do the cuff and the contrast gray. And then here's the start of the second one. So I did the toe using magic loop on long circulars and then after a stripe I switched over to the nine inch. And these are just really small and easy to pack anywhere. Um, if I didn't have the giant, or not giant, if I didn't have the 50 gram thing of yarn that's bigger. I mean, look how small this project is. Um, I could probably actually put this in a tiny project bag if I wanted to save space for bringing it somewhere. But um, it's really fun and nice and mindless, I suppose. Um, so you can pick it up and put it down really easily, which I really appreciate having that kind of project for road trips, for traveling, for maybe when I'm sitting and playing with the kids and so I can put it down and not worry about losing my spot or losing count like you might in lace or color work or something a little more complicated that has increases and things like that. Um, so yes, I love that. And then I think it was when I was working on, let me see here, when I was working on the US Zero socks that and before I cast on the high desert socks that I was itching to get another pair of socks on the needles that I didn't have to think much about um, and that I could use US 2 or 2.75 millimeter needles. So here's another set of socks. This is Patton's Croy sock yarn. It is marled and stripy. I seem to have a marled and stripy thing going on currently. So here's one magic loop, knit toe up. I just made sure to start at the beginning of a stripe so I did not use a contrast toe but there's enough yardage in that stripe section that it actually works out really well and kind of looks like a contrast toe. So that's one of them. And the second one I have in a DPN Cozy because I don't have this size of needle in 9 inch circulars. But I decided to try double pointed with these so I made this little Cozy. This is out of baby wearing woven wrap scrap um, fabric. The inside is as well. So it has memories along with it. And then I put on some matching snap buttons. The inside I did this gray to match the gray. The outside I did this peachy color, peachy coral color to match the outside. So these ones I have on the these DPNs. And I'm really actually enjoying it. It's knitting up very nicely. I don't I kind of like the clacking of it. But it's working up quickly. I'm really enjoying these stripes. So I've noticed on with this yarn, the stripes for the different colors is, they're pretty big. Um, so I think in the future, I want to try some self-striping yarn that has thinner stripes. Um, I also knit my socks in a smaller circumference. So if I'm using US 2s, I cast on 48. If I'm using US 1s, I cast on 56, yeah, 56, I think. If I'm casting or using one and a half, I think I cast on 52, maybe. So I think that also 
makes a difference as to how big your stripes are because you'll be going around more times than if someone is casting on 64 or 72 stitches for their circumference. Okay, so next thing, let's see, I think that's it for the socks. In the video clip earlier in this um, video, I showed the start of another work in progress. It is the Beloved Bonnet by Tin Can Knits. I've made this a few times. I really enjoy this pattern. It is fun, it is clever, um, it is seamless, so it's knit from one end all the way to the other end, and you don't cut your yarn at all or seam anything, so it's really fun. Um, here is the beginning of that. I haven't made too much progress on it, but here's the I cord. And then here's the beginning on one side of the ear, so you can kind of picture how that goes. Well, not on me, but it'll be for one of my daughters. Isn't that fun? I feel like this pattern is really great for variegated and speckled and tonal yarns. Um, it's good for heathered and solid and everything else too, but like some people don't like color pooling on sweaters and so they'll alternate skeins, but something that still has color pooling. But I feel like for a small project like a hat, color pooling could be really fun. Um, and it's neat to see how the variegation of the colors in the yarn work up in a hat. So I think I really enjoy it. Here's the rest of the yarn. I think these colors are really fun. There's blue and teal, some green, pink and purple. This is my Love Note sweater by Tin Can Knits. Speaking of Tin Can Knits. I have slit, split for the sleeves. Yes, I got over the lace section and it, the lace section is beautiful, but I just don't like knitting lace. It takes more concentration. I can't read the yarn overs very well. If a yarn over kind of skips over a spot or falls off a needle or I have to rip back and figure out like which parts are yarn overs or not, it's just kind of stressful. Um, and so I don't enjoy it. However, that being said, I know the lace section for this is not a lot. I do love how it looks and I got over it. It's fine. You'll notice that I knit mine a little differently as I mentioned in uh, a previous episode. I did start at the neckline and knit it just top down. The original pattern calls for provisional cast on and then you go back and do that. I have a few other mods as well, but um, like for example, some of the other ones you'll notice has much more of a crew neck but I wanted mine wider and I really like how it's looking. It's pretty stretchy on top so if it ends up being too wide I can always um, do a crochet slip stitch edge back around but so far I'm really liking it. Um, because of this lacy part I have to wear something underneath it anyway so if the neckline is a little bit too wide I really don't mind. Um, I plan on wearing it with like flowy tank tops underneath or over a summer dress um, so I'm really liking how this is working up. So split for the sleeves. It's just easy stockinette from here on out. And then same with the sleeves. I haven't quite decided what sleeve length I want to do yet. So I think I'll decide that later as once I finish the body. Um, but I really like how this color is working up. It is so soft and so floofy. This yarn is kind of interesting. I feel like it's flat. Like the yarn itself is flat and really fuzzy and it's beautiful and it's fun to work with. Um, this yarn again is less traveled yarn in the Moonstone colorway from the Enchantment collection. It's called Smohair, 69% silk, 22% kid mohair, 9% nylon. There's the Sometimes I will, um, when I'm done with the project, or if I have multiple skeins of the same yarn, I'll just punch a hole in that label and then attach it with a swatch if I've swatched for that particular project so that the swatch stays with, um, or the label stays with the swatch. So yes, this is a beautiful yarn. It is so light, so airy, ethereal really. I mean, it's got this silvery lavender with some hints of pink in it. I noticed here you can see the pink a little bit. Isn't that pretty? So yes, I've put a marker in the front so I know which side is the front of the sweater. I don't think we have any short rows or anything yet. 
So the front and the back are exactly the same right now. I have two little spots here I'll need to figure out later. Like I said, yarn overs, annoying. And somehow I think it skipped over one of my place markers that I had holding between repeats. And so I missed a yarn, like catching a yarn over in the next stitch. So it left kind of a gaping hole. So easy peasy, I'll fix it later, no big deal. But yes, this is the progress on my Love Note sweater. I am so excited um, to have this as part of my wardrobe. My hope is to have it done maybe maybe in March. Okay, last thing that I want to show you is in this project bag. This is the Glass Houses Shawl by Kelly Monster. I talked about this shawl I think in November or December in a previous episode. I had already assigned my yarn to it. Um, it was going to be this like bright fuchsia with this um, neon yellow toned rainbow speckling variegated yarn. Um, but then I decided I wanted something to be even higher contrast. Because of how this shawl is, it has all these little windows of color work and I just wanted a high contrast um, between the two sections. A, it makes it easier to read which ones are my slip stitches and which ones are not. And B, I just felt like this design really shines with something that's more high contrast. Although I guess I should, shouldn't just say that because I've seen some that are a little bit lower contrast where the tone is more similar between the two um, yarns used and they're also very beautiful. But I wanted high contrast. So I changed my mind on the color. Oh, and also the fuchsia I had bought with another skein of yarn from the same dyer and I kind of wanted to keep those two together for another project. Um, so let me show you. So I opted for this blue instead. This is Matisse Blue by Malabrigo and it is so pretty. It's getting kind of blown out a little bit. It's a really rich, vibrant blue. So it looks a little brighter in the camera than it does in person. And then here's the contrast. Oops, sorry. It's kind of all over the place. Color, and this is by Teal Torch Knits. I believe she called it Catherine. So see how it's like kind of a yellow, more yellow in there, and then all these other colors? Maybe not. Maybe it's just all these other colors. But the fuchsia I had was similar to like the fuchsia in here. And then I was worried that as I was slipping stitches that I would get mixed up on which ones were slipped or not slipped. So I decided something that was high contrast, a color that wasn't in here at all, would probably do better for me. So these are the two colors that I'm using for this shawl. And let me show you my progress. Check that out. So the beginning was just one color. So that was a little boring, but it's okay. I don't mind garter. I think that's really fun. It's my first time doing this I-cord edging and that is really fun. I love how nice it looks. It's really cool. But look at this. Look at these little windows of color. These little pockets of color are so happy. I am so glad that I went with this color combination. It is really fun. It is easy for me to see, even if I'm tired. And then the back looks like this. So you've got these little floats across. So it calls for size five or 3.75 millimeter needles. Um, I am using the size five for the garter stitch parts. And then for the slip stitch windows, I'm using a size six or four millimeter needles just to make sure it's not too tight. Cause I just, I've noticed that for me, I don't always have to go up a needle size for like stranded fair isle color work, but for slipping stitches, I do. Because otherwise I feel like it just gets too tight. I did not do a gauge swatch because it's a shawl. I don't do gauge swatches for shawls. Um, 
and the pattern is written up nicely. It has different sections. So you have your setup, you have your window section one, window section two. I just finished window section two. I will be starting window section three. I do feel like it goes pretty quickly because of the slipping. And um, of course it'll take longer and longer because as it gets bigger and bigger for each section, but it's really fun to see how it works up. I feel like it's similar to how when I'm doing Fair Isle um, color work, it's just exciting to see. It's like your picture is coming to life as you're going like each round or each row. Um, so that's really, really fun. Um, I've seen some people's projects where they finish this in like a week or two. I don't think that'll be the case for me. Um, again, I don't have like a timeline for it, but I am really excited to see how it goes and I do really, really want to wear it. So we will see how this goes. Here, you can look at it again. Oh, I love it. I wanted to share with you one more thing. I wanted to share with you the sweater that I'm wearing. Let me take this off and show you. I don't think I can move back far enough here. Just kind of go like this. So this is the Fjord sweater. It's by Midori at Knit Cafe Midori on Instagram. Um, I knit this over the summer. Um, oh no, I didn't knit it over the summer. I knit it almost exactly a year ago. So I started it end of February and finished it um, mid-March. I knit the smallest size. There is a kid's version of this called the hibiscus and that I test knitted. Um, so I can put a picture of that here. Um, that was really fun to test knit. And this pattern only goes from um, to fit a 32 inch bust to a 48 inch bust. So it is not very size inclusive. Um, since this pattern was published, I know Midori is working on um, size inclusivity for her future patterns. So there is at least one that she's currently test knitting that has um, a much greater range um, of sizes. So I am really excited to see that change happen. Um, she does a really good job of having schematics in her patterns and giving you many, many different measurements, which is also helpful for adjusting something for yourself, but just also figuring out um, if you're on track for where things are supposed to fall. So again, I <clears throat> adjusted mine a bit for fit. So mine has less positive ease to it and my sleeves ended up being shorter. Um, on in hers, I believe the sleeve goes down here and just the natural weight of her sweater, like it, like the design is for it to weigh down more, but because I did mine in a lighter weight and I shortened the sleeves, the look is slightly different. Um, but I really love it. I knit it to be several inches, I think past my, the top of my hip here. So it also goes well over dresses. I can wear it also with pants, it works really well. I think the modeled picture she has on um, her pattern, she has it kind of tucked in. The bottom is not like a bulky ribbing, so it would be easy to tuck in if that's something you wanted to do. She also has a big flower um, on her uh, modeled one, and it's this like really pretty floppy, modern looking flower. Um, and so I did do that on the hibiscus pullover for one of my daughters when I test knit it, but I didn't do it for myself here. Um, so it's a fun pattern. It has these puffy sleeves. It is knit top down. Um, it is really fun. Um, okay, so I think that's all I've got for you as far as projects. Um, I recently finished a trilogy by Grace Lynn. Um, it was the young adult, or not young adult, like children's chapter book. Um, it I think it has it written on there for ages like 8 to 12 or grade levels 3 to 7. Um, it was an easy read. It's all based on like Chinese folklore. It was really fun to read because there are bits and pieces from like the beginning of the book that all make sense at the end and then if you read all three you'll see like there's crossing between the stories and you're like oh that's from this book or that's from that book or different generations have passed and then you're like oh that's so-and-so's grandmother or Anyway, it's really, really fun. Um, 
So it's where the mountain meets the moon, starry river of the sky, and when the sea turned to silver. And um, I will put the pictures of the book covers here on the side. Um, it was a really fun read. So I was planning on reading these to my kids, but I just ended up reading them all to myself. Um, maybe later I will check them out from the library again, or maybe we'll get them books as a birthday present or as a Christmas present or something, and then we can slowly take our time and read them at home. So with that, cheers to being creative. I hope you are having a wonderful start to February. Have a great day. Take care.